How's it going, everyone? Ahead of the uh, PSN summer sale, I was about to say Steam summer sale, that just wrapped up the PSN summer sale, and Amazon Prime Day. I uh, want to highlight some really great PlayStation physical deals that are available right now. Remember that you might want to be slightly cautious picking things up. Not that I don't believe any of these deals are going to be beaten out by the PSN summer sale. That's particularly for those of you that just prefer to buy digital games. But Amazon Prime Day, um, I foresee there being some good deals as a part of that. So just keep that in mind. But there's a lot of good stuff available right now. Woot.com and GameStop's got... A pretty solid score in Excel running right now as well, so we'll talk that at the end of this video. And I do want to reiterate one of the really solid deals that's available on Amazon for a really good 2024 title. We'll get to that at the end of this video, but right off the top, we got Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection down to $24.99 over at Woot. This is a great deal given all the content that you get. Now, bear in mind, I did grow up with Battle Network, so there's a little bit of nostalgia attached here as far as my um, perception of Battle Network, but also nostalgia evaporates pretty fast when you actually go back and play some of these games. I recently played through Kingdom Hearts 1, and boy, nostalgia can save how badly that game is dated. Nostalgia cannot save how poorly Battle Network 1 has aged. Battle Network 1 is going to be the game that most people obviously start with with the Battle Network Legacy Collection. And I feel like that almost sets people up to uh, hate the Battle Network titles. Because Battle Network 1, foundationally, it set the template for what the game would evolve into. But they really got it right with Battle Network 2, adding a lot of quality of life updates. Battle Network 1 is just not that great and if you do play bn1 i would highly recommend you to have a guide at all times but uh after that after bn1 bn2 is really good battle network 3 is also where they do the pokemon gimmick where you have you know multiple versions that differ a little bit um although with battle network 4 and 5 they differ a lot and uh, 6 even as well so keep that in mind as well but you're getting what it's one, two, and then three is two, four is two, five is two. And you're getting 10 games uh, for $25. You're probably only going to play through, you know, I don't see many people doing both versions of Battle Network 3, 4, 5, and 6, but you get the idea. It's a lot of games for your dollar and for 25 bucks. I think this is a great deal. Just bear in mind, if you do start off with Battle Network 1, I recommend you to have a guide or uh, even skip that game entirely and don't let that deter you from trying Battle Network 2. Just my two cents there. Next up, we have Persona 5 Tactical, $14.99 on this. Damn good deal for the PlayStation 4 version, which obviously will upgrade to the PS5 version. Uh, P5 Tactical is a spin-off Persona title, so, you know, obviously have knowledge of Persona 5 and ideally beat Persona 5. And then you can play Tactica. Tactica, obviously, a tactics-based JRPG. $60, probably a little bit of a stretch for some people, but for $15, I think that's a really good deal. And the last deal on Woot.com is the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 Deluxe Edition bundle. Includes both games. You get an art book and a digital soundtrack. The art book is a mini art book. This typically goes for like 70 bucks and rarely goes on sale, this physical copy. Um, Cold Steel 3 and 4 digitally also go for a hefty price point. Cold Steel 3, I want to say, gets down to like $20, and Cold Steel 4 gets down to like $30, $35. So, you know, you are saving, and... Uh, Legend of Heroes is one of those franchises that I would want these games, uh, if you're gonna get these games, you know, consider getting hard copies of them. It's not like every one of them are gonna appreciate in price. Cold Steel 1 and 2, because they were published by Xseed, have really appreciated in price, which is unfortunate. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Those games probably, either you're gonna pay a pretty penny or you're gonna get them digitally. Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4, obviously play Cold Steel 1 and 2. I've talked about Legend of Heroes ad nauseum at this point. I'm kind of at the point where I think you can jump into any of the arcs uh, as is. So if you're going to start with Cold Steel, obviously start with Cold Steel 1 and work your way through uh, Cold Steel 4. Um, I think Daybreak, which just came out, that's a good starting point as well. Look, if I tell you guys... Go play the uh, Trails from the Sky trilogy. Go play the Crossbell games and go play Cold Steel, all of those games, and then you can catch up and play Reverie, and then you can play Daybreak. Like, look, it's 10 70 to 80 hour JRPGs. Nobody's going through all those games. Well, we only have a finite amount of time on this planet, you guys, and at this point, I am more inclined to tell you guys either jump in with Cold Steel 1, play through all those games, or 
jump right into Daybreak, and if you enjoy Daybreak a lot, which, spoiler alert, you will, I'm playing through it right now, and the game is effing awesome, um, you'll probably be inclined at that point to go back and play some of those other games, but if you don't have the investment into the series, Going back and, let's say, playing the Sky Trilogy, which, by the way, isn't readily available on PlayStation platforms, trying to make your way through that, those games are incredibly dated, incredibly archaic, as are the Crossbell games. They're great games, great from a narrative standpoint, but if you have the investment into the franchise, then circling back and playing through the Sky Trilogy and Crossbell uh, titles, I feel like works a lot better because you'll be able to look past some of the shortcomings of those games just being so dated, you know, they're products of their time. But tangent over, Cold Steel 3 and 4, the Deluxe Edition, $45 here, pretty good deal. And again, obviously play Cold Steel 1 and 2. The idea with the Legend of Heroes games at this point is I think it's totally okay to start with any of the arcs. That being the Crossbell games, that being the Sky Trilogy, that being Cold Steel, that being Daybreak. Um, I would probably say start with Cold Steel or Daybreak because those games are far more modernized than the aforementioned other two uh, arcs that are available. Obviously, also, all of the games connect together and they tell uh, a very, very good narrative and this is the best world building, I think, that's in a video game. I often say a JRPG. Screw that. I think Legend of Heroes has the best world building in any video game franchise. And when you have um, how many? 11 JRPGs that all connect together 70 hours at length minimum. Uh, you know, that's kind of to be expected. So, tangent over. Go check it out. There you go with that. Alright, now moving on to GameStop. More JRPGs here. And some titles I would definitely recommend. Star Ocean The Second Story R is down to $29.99. Now my issue with Star Ocean The Second Story R was its price point. I thought $49.99 was just a little bit too pricey, but that's Square Enix doing what they're gonna do as far as their PSP re-releases. They price Crisis Core at that, Tactics Ogre at that. That's what you gotta expect. But Star Ocean The Second Story R is really, really well done. A fantastic upgrade to Star Ocean 2, and I really had a great time with it. Definitely go check this out. Soundtrack is awesome. Characters aren't blow away, I will say that, and narratively, it's not blow away. It's fine. It's, like, totally serviceable. Um, but, yeah, given the level of JR, we just talked about Legend of Heroes, and Star Ocean ain't Legend of Heroes. Let's just put it that way. Final Fantasy uh, 7 Rebirth is $55 physically. I mean, I feel like most of you guys at this point have uh, bought, uh, bought this game. I think it's a front runner for Game of the Year for a lot of people, and for $55, not a bad price, given that this is going to hold up for quite a while. Final Fantasy 16, on the other hand, $30 on this. I would have to imagine that Square Enix is eventually going to release a complete edition, probably in the fall. Uh, you've got Rising Tides and Echoes of the Fall, and as DLC content, the game's going to come to PC here shortly as well. Uh, I would imagine you want to bundle all that together, re-release it on PlayStation, re-release it on PC, you know, print some more money, but if you want to get it right now, just FF16 standalone, 30 bucks for that. And then SMT5 Vengeance is $39.99, a uh, demon collecting title. Not crazy about it, it wasn't really my cup of tea. Um, you know, soundtrack is really good, and the dude constantly calling you young man, and like, I, I, I can, uh, I can vibe with that. Young man, go over here. Young man, do this. But, uh, nevertheless, narratively, it's just not... Uh, not blow away, but that's never what SMT is going to really focus on. It's fine, um, and I wasn't crazy about some of the level design aspects. However, the Vengeance uh, upgrade does add a lot of refinements to the, na uh, to the navigation, and I think for most people, you're going to end up enjoying it. And this just came out, and it's already down to $40, so that's pretty good. And then lastly, Unicorn Overlord is $35. I mentioned this yesterday, but is a fantastic deal on a great JRPG that came out just a few months ago. Unfortunately, the game came out just a few weeks after FF7 Rebirth, so I just feel like timing was uh, not so great. But for $35 uh, now, you know, most of you guys have finished up FF7 Rebirth. Cir circle back and check out Unicorn Overlord. I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. But that is going to do it for me. Links to all of these deals will be in the description box below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.